said to pick it up because it will re- put that helmet on because it will renew our mind. It will protect us from the things the enemy throws our way. But he also said, uh, take up that sword of the Spirit. He said, pick it up. That sword is an offensive weapon right then and there. It will inflict serious damage to the powers of darkness. Jesus fought the devil with what? The word of God, didn't he? If used right, it will have its intended results. The problem is, people don't know how to use the sword. People don't know anything about the sword because they've never studied the Word of God. If you study the Word of God, let me tell you, the devil sees you coming, it's going to know you're packing. Let me tell you, I like to tell that devil I'm carrying a concealed weapon, but it's open. It's called the Word of God. I don't have to have a permit for it. I'm just a child of God, and I've studied it. I've got a concealed weapon on me tonight, devil. It's called the Word of God. Cross my path, and I'm going to take it. I see you doing something you don't need to do. I'm going to take that sword out, and I'm going to chop your head off. Think about what David did once he knocked down that giant. What did he do? That giant was down, didn't he? David said, but I'm going to make sure, old boy. Goliath ain't going to talk back to me. He took his sword out. He chopped the head of Goliath off. What are you saying there? I'm saying there's more than meets the eye there. I'm telling you dead giants don't talk back. We take the sword of the spirit and we chop the head of the giant off. We cut the head of the giant off. How many know if the head dies, the rest of the body dies? If I see a copperhead or a rattlesnake, I'm not going to cut its head off first. Guess where I'm aiming for? The head. I got a gun in my hand. I see it. I'm going to shoot that thing in the head. Because if I get him in the head, I got a head shot. He's dead. (laughs) He's going to twitch for just a minute because of his nerves, but he's dead. What are you saying there? I'm saying we take that sword out. There's a big giant right there, and we cut the head of him off. The rock, we got the youth just like David did. And we tell, listen, when he's dead, David, make sure you ain't coming back again. I'm not going to fight you no more, Goliath. You're down, and I'm I'm taking your head off, and I'm going to show that I took the head of the giant off. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Word of God will cut the head of the giant off tonight. Today, more than ever, I believe it is time for the church to stand fast in the Word of God. Don't let people just tell you, it's just a book of yesterday. No, it is a living book, and it is life. It is our weaponry to make it in this world, to be more than conquerors. But people don't know it. The Word of God. Finally, you've got to stand fast in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe if we're going to make an impact. Let me tell you, I like what I hear going around in West Virginia. There's revivals that are breaking loose. How many know in the last day he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon flesh. Well, I'm hearing of some schools down there. I know it started with a Church of God preacher. Well, God started it, but he was a vessel, but it spread to other schools there. The devil's tried to rear his ugly head, but they're standing fast in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I believe that we're living in that time. If there's ever been a time that we need the Holy Ghost, and I'm telling you, he showed up here Sunday night. He showed up here. If you didn't feel him, I'm telling you right now, you missed out on a blessing of God. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, the real, genuine move of God was here Sunday night. There's some people that walked out of here with a move of God. There's some people that walked out of here with victory. I'm telling you what the Spirit put in my, the Holy Ghost told me. He said he'd done some things in here. And there's some victories that's been won in here. If we're going to make it in here in these last days, we've got to stand strong in the Holy Ghost. 
Let me tell you, he may not always show up like that. He shows up like this tonight. He shows up when you ain't least expecting it. But he still shows up. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. People are powerless. Notice what Jesus said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost moves in mysterious ways. Let me tell you, they thought they were drunk on that day of Pentecost, didn't they? <laughs> they were moving all over the place. Let me tell you, but Peter said, these ain't drunk. On the wine you think, but these were drunk on the power of the Holy Ghost. Not only that, go in the Old Testament. Even in the temple, they would, he would come so strong, the Spirit of God would, it would knock them down. I still be, believe you can still be slain in the Spirit. I believe in the genuine move of it. I still believe in the evidence of speaking in tongues. As the Spirit gives the utterance. I still believe in an acts experience. I still believe the Shekinah glory of God can fill this sanctuary. I'm telling you right now. People say they don't want to believe in it. That's all right. Because they don't know what they're missing out on either. They may have an argument, but I've got an experience. Anybody know what I'm saying? There's some of these denominations that says we don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Well, they ripped the book of Acts out, ain't they? They took half of Paul's writing and throwed it out in the book of Corinthians. I'm telling you, he's still the same as he was yesterday. And if we're going to stand strong, if we're going to be mighty in this last day, we've got to have stand fast in his power. Why do you think Jesus told the disciples? He said, before you go out, he gave them the mandate. But he says, before you go to accomplish that great mandate, that I have given you. He says, Go first into Jerusalem and tarry and wait for the promise from above. Now, why do you think Jesus, He gave them the mandate. He said, Before you go, you better be endued with power from above. I'll tell you why. He knew what they were going to encounter down the road. And they would need the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. He knew they wasn't playing with some fairy tale. He knew there was a real devil out there that was going to oppose them. He knew that there was a real devil out there that was going to try to stop them. He said, but before you go, you shall be endued with power from above. You need the Holy Ghost. If there's ever been a day that we need the Holy Ghost in our lives operating, we need to be endued with power. Just like Samson told him after he repented, Phil, remember me one more time. One more time, fill me with your spirit. One more time, let me be endued with your power from above. How many know that ought to be the prayer of the church tonight? One more time. I go into the book of Acts chapter 6 and I see a man that the Spirit of God resided on. He stood fast and he stood fast in the power of the Holy Ghost. They lied upon him, but they couldn't overcome what he was saying. Acts chapter 6 verses 8 through 10. And Stephen, full of faith, I like that, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue of the Libertans and the Syrians, 
and the Alexanders of them of Sicily and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Let me tell you who was putting the words in Stephen's mouth. It was the Holy Ghost. You ever thought about what Jesus said? Take no thought what you would say because he would fill your words, fill your mouth with words. That's, I believe, exactly what was happening right there. Oh, they were arguing with him, but they didn't have an answer from the one above. You know what they assembled to do to stop Stephen? They got people to lie against him. You know the story, but let me tell you what they didn't know what they were doing. It was time for Stephen to depart. It was time for Stephen to do go. But God was saying, yes, I'm going to allow this to go on in the face of opposition, but I'm going to rise another one up out of your own camp. I, I'm going to rise another one up out of the camp of the enemy. I'm going to rise another one up. I, yes, this one may be stoned to death, but the one that I'm going to rise up I, is going to consent to his death, I, and he's going to hear this and pray for him. In a few chapters over, I'm going to encounter him on the Damascus Road. Uh-oh. What are you saying? I'm saying God was behind it all. God said, yeah, Stephen, it's time for you to go. But I'm going to use that prayer, lay no charge to him. And I believe it had an effect on the man that consented to it. Just a few cha a chapter or two over on the Damascus Road. Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? Let me tell you. <laughs> Saul would forever be changed that day. Saul would no longer be Saul. What would he be called? He would be called Paul. I thought about that. God was showing Saul was the old man, but Paul was the new man. What he'd God done with that, everything that Stephen went through. Yeah, he was stoned. They lied against him, everything. But God used that. He said, but I'm going to use this one I raise up. I'm going to use the devil's tool. And I'm going to make you my instrument. Ain't that something how God works? God can take a tool of the devil and turn him into an instrument of his in just a matter of time. Those that have persecuted the church the worst, he was, Saul was the great persecutor, become the greatest, one of the greatest instruments God would ever use. He would pin down half of the New Testament. That was the Holy Ghost. I want you to think about how God works tonight. He works in ways beyond what we can imagine. We may not understand His ways sometimes. But let me tell you, God had a plan right there. God just said, I got Saul that I'm raising into a pile. If we're going to stand strong in these last days, I believe it had to be the Holy Ghost helping Stephen Stone, because I'm convinced most people would have said, Lord, send lightning down to strike them. No, Stephen was saying, Lord, lay no charge to him. You know what he said? Guess who he's seen? He said, I see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. If we're going to make it, just like Stephen, we got to stand fast in the power of the Holy Ghost. Today, it's vile. Today, it's wicked. People are mean. People are cruel. They'll just soon kill you than to look at you. I, I seen where this, that down in Maryland took place, and I seen the pictures they got out. I thought to myself, what would make people want to do that to another individual? I know there's been times you may feel like wringing somebody's neck. But I never wanted to put, literally kill anybody. People literally will kill you for nothing, man. When they'll literally stick a gun to you because they're vile, they're anti, got that spirit on them. I'm telling you, I believe a lot of these people walking around are probably full of the devil. The devil's influence. 